Hi everyone, my name is Anna Jacobs and I am a non-resident fellow at the Arab Gulf States Institute in Washington and an advisor at Gulf State Analytics. And today I will be talking about Qatari foreign policy and regional relations in the aftermath of the signing of the Al Ula Agreement. The signing of the Al Ula Agreement in January is an important first step in improving Qatar's relations with many of its neighbors and in quelling tensions in the region more broadly. However, more confidence building measures are necessary to ensure that the renewed efforts towards GCC unity expressed in Al Ula are actually maintained and effectively implemented. The blockade against Qatar greatly expanded bilateral ties between Qatar and both Iran and Turkey. And the signing of Al Ula will not change this reality, especially given the fact that the blockade ended without Qatar having to make any concession from the list of demands issued by the blockading countries of Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt. Al Ula was a major foreign policy win for Qatar, um, but the agreement also papers over deeper divisions between Qatar and some of its Gulf neighbors, like the UAE. So the potential for conflicts between Gulf states will continue to shape Qatar's foreign policy decisions and regional relations. Competition between regional blocs like Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain and Egypt on the one hand and Qatar and Turkey on the other will continue to influence Qatari foreign policy and limit the potential for cooperation at the wider regional level. The signing of Al Ula and the success of Qatar's strategy to not capitulate to the maximalist demands of the blockading countries has served to further increase Qatar's regional influence. Qatar remained a key strategic ally for the U.S. both before and throughout the blockade. The signing of El Ula will further elevate U.S.-Qatar bilateral ties. Qatar hosts the largest U.S. military base in the Middle East and supports U.S. regional peace efforts like the Afghanistan talks. Qatar has also acted as a key intermediary between Palestinian factions and between Israel and Hamas, often in partnership with U.S. efforts. The U.S.-Qatar relationship will be even more important moving forward to help secure the Biden administration's objectives in the Middle East. With the signing of Al Ula and the decline in tensions within the GCC, Qatar can now focus on supporting other U.S. efforts in the region, namely returning to the Iran nuclear uh, agreement and helping to end the war in Yemen. Qatar has already established itself as an important partner in helping to resolve regional conflict. The country played a pivotal role by hosting and supporting the U.S. brokered Afghanistan talks. Furthermore, the success of the Biden administration's priorities in the Middle East, namely returning to the Iran nuclear uh, agreement and pursuing a larger regional deal to address other issues, such as Iran's funding of proxy militias and its ballistic missile program, will depend on the willingness of g Gulf actors like Saudi Arabia to come to the table to negotiate and to support a regional security framework to resolve conflict. G Gulf states like Qatar and Oman, both of whom maintain close ties with Iran, will play an important role in facilitating negotiations. The blockade against Qatar actually served to strengthen ties between Qatar and Iran 
Contrary to the objectives of the blockading countries of Saudi Arabia, UAE, Bahrain, and Egypt. Stronger ties between Qatar and Iran will actually help secure U.S. foreign policy objectives in the Middle East. Thank you for listening in.